What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the spot where we kick back in and react to all kind of different things. Alright, so what we got going on today? It's time for another True Facts. Another animal video from those who give us the weirdest, strangest, funniest facts for animals. This one is the True Facts Animal Awards, Tangled Worms, Creepiest Dave, and much more. Alright, so yeah, this one sounds like it's gonna be wild, so... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Learn to think. Welcome to the True Facts Animal Awards. Celebrating animals with awards. Why does that look like a severed thumb, just the way it's shaped? I know it's not a thumb, it's some kind of creature, but just the way it's shaped. Look at the, it looks like the, the nail is like right there on the left side. It's like, ugh. <laughs> Jerry, how is this appropriate? No, it does. It doesn't look like the fountains in Vegas, Jerry. It looks like a, whatever. <laughs> in the category of close-knit friends, the winner is the California blackworm. Now, many animals huddle together for warmth or protection, but the California blackworm takes it to a whole new level. These worms are about a centimeter long, and under the right conditions, they come together to form an incredible tangled mess. But these worms aren't just huddling close together willy-nilly. They loop and twist around each other and form braids, and the resulting ball of worms is like a connected mass. This mass, it turns out, has some unusual physical properties. It acts a bit like a non-Newtonian fluid, like cornstarch and water. If you happen to have a tube of these worms lying about, and you put a metal ball in it, for fun, the tangle of worms acts sort of like a thick liquid, letting the ball sink to the bottom. But if you drop a ball of these worms from a great height, well not a great height, a good height, they act more like a solid, like a lump. Here you can see somebody playing around with a lump of about 50,000 of them. Doesn't look like much, has a kind of cow turd vibe, doesn't it? But it turns- <laughs> Cow turd vibe. Oh man, doesn't even look like worms tangled up anymore. It's just like, yeah, just a huge brown mass. Now, this lump can do things. Look at this. These worms like it wet. So if you put a ball of them onto a table that's not wet, watch what they do. They start searching around for water, but sort of as a team. Now, if they can't find any water and start to dry out, they come back together and try to minimize their surface area by creating a ball shape so they don't lose moisture. Kind of feel sad for them. Oh, man. The, the one on the side, you see him? They got separated. About to dry out and die right there. Didn't make it. Uh, almost for sorry for The one that got left behind there. But in this way, the worms in the middle can survive extended periods of dehydration. You can see that these blobs can often move as a unit, and how they do it is pretty crazy. Here's a small tangle that's trying to get away from the heat. I mean, it looks like a freaking octopus. You can see there's worms on the leading edge that are pulling, while the worms in the middle sort of curl up and lift the mass off the surface. Here's a bigger one so you can see it in action. The blob actually moves slower than an individual worm can move. But in a blob, more worms get to the finish line and fewer are left behind. And mm. that's impressive. But come on, the most hey, amazing- teamwork make the dream work. <laughs> thing, thing is, they don't get stuck. I mean, you've seen what a necklace drawer looks like. When these worm balls have to come apart, you'd expect some knots and some awkward conversations. But it turns out that changes in their environment, like temperature, cause each individual worm to change how often and how tightly it twists and turns. And these little changes in individual worm behavior allow the group to form something that's sort of like a solid. And this is the coolest. The joining together can take some minutes. But watch this. This next clip's in real time. If they have to, they skedaddle like the cops showed up at a high school party. And what's more, <laughs> there's no knots. In the category of, oh, so that's where it is, science hippies discovered evidence of a functional clitoris in dolphins. By functional, what? they mean that it gives pleasure to the female during intercourse with males, but also during interactions with other females, which apparently use their snouts, flippers, and flukes. And just like- Okay, what, what weirdo was really searching for it, though? I, I don't want to know who that was. I don't want to meet that person. Somebody very odd. Like the human clitoris, it takes a team of scientists to find it, Jerry. That's not a good <laughs> joke. Why the hell are people looking that they can't find it? This is where it is in the dolphin, I bet you can't. which apparently use their snouts, flippers, and flukes. And just like the human clitoris, it takes a team of scientists to find it, Jerry. That's not a good joke. Where the hell are people looking that they can't find it? This is where it is in the dolphin, I bet you can guess where they looked. Here's a clue, it wasn't behind the ear. And if you do get lost, do what you do in the subway. Ask for directions. Don't just stumble around in circles until someone politely asks you to leave. And don't get this started. It's a... 
<laughs> Asking for directions. There's only one person that you can ask. <laughs> Excuse me. Do I take a left here? <laughs> Sensitive topic. In the category of why you should always wear pants to a picnic, well, hold on, let's back up. There's something called the ACG Case Reports Journal. <clears throat> Honestly, it's a bunch of assholes. Like, actually, it's the American College of Gastroenterology. You see the logo with the stick and the snake? I think it's a reference to how they used to do colonoscopies or something like that. Anyways, there's this journal. Good cover image, by the way. You can sort of make out the colon, and it's broken. <laughs> Clever. But doctors find all- oh, sorry. But doctors find all sorts of things in their examinations. And they write about it here. Like, apparently there's something called cocaine gut. Had no idea. And look at this, a case of auto-brewery wow. syndrome, where a man was apparently getting drunk from alcohol he made inside his body. I mean, that's a cheap date. And then there's this one. Oh, I've heard of that. Auto-brewery? Um... Yeah, I've heard of a couple of cases like that. It's super rare, but it sucks for people involved. Basically, they, um, their bodies produce like yeast, like a yeast-like uh, 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 product. And then what does yeast turn into? You know, if it's fermented, alcohol. That's what it's made from. So they'll literally get drunk without actually drinking. Like... The craziest case was where this dude got, um, I can't remember the name, but he got a, 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 a ticket for drunk driving. And he swore up and down he didn't drink at all and took it to court and everything. And after some back and forth and finally getting the test done and everything, they was finally able to figure out that, yeah, he wasn't actually drinking. So they had to put him on a certain medication to keep himself from just, you know, naturally being drunk by you know, unintentional completely. Dude wasn't a drinker at all. Just his body just did that. Wild. An unusual finding, and I'm glad they said unusual, of a ladybug on screening colonoscopy. And there's pictures too. Now uh, what? In trans colon during colonos screening colonoscopy? How do you get a ladybug in there? You know what? It's not that, another question I don't want answered. Oh man, come back to the beginning of this list. Clever. But doctors find all, sorry, but doctors find all sorts of things in their exam. Wasn't some, uh, I'm more interested in this list. A uh, rare, a rare cause of chronic diarrhea in an adult patient. Okay. Emanations. And they write about it. Let me see, a case of. Okay, none of these, none of these are crazy. Here. Like, apparently, there's something called yeah, cocaine co gut. Cocaine gut. 34-year-old man presented to the emergency department with generalized abdominal pain and rectal bleeding. On examination, the patient was... I can't even finish this. Hemodynamically unstable and had to... And had a diffusely tender and abdomen. Oh, I bet it was tender. <laughs> I can't even finish reading this. I'm laughing so hard. Oh, man. There's a drug lord somewhere who was pissed off after that report. In their examinations, <laughs> and they write about it here. Like, apparently, there's something called cocaine gut. Had no idea. And look at this a case of auto brewery syndrome, where a man <clears throat> was apparently getting drunk from alcohol he made inside his body. I mean, that's a cheap date. And then there's this one. An unusual finding, and I'm glad they said unusual, of unusual. a ladybug on screening colonoscopy. And there's pictures, too. Now, as much as people complain about colonoscopies, I'm pretty sure it's not as bad as being an insect of the field and forest and getting lost in someone's ass. That's bad enough, and then someone gets it on camera. And the amazing thing is, in the third shot, the ladybug turns around. It's like, all right, Doc, as long as we're both here, you can have a look in mine. <laughs> it's like, hey, two examinations at once. <laughs> oh, man. Patient wakes up, is all confused when he gets charged double. You pay by the hole, not the size of it. <laughs> Little fishies, are you afraid of the dark? It's nighttime now. Go to bed. Go to bed. Everybody, go to bed. I'm just kidding with you. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. Boo! Where is the sun? Where did it go? I mess with the fishes. Brilliant.org is an excellent way to learn math and computer science. Listen, if you're planning on having an internet out today. <clears throat>
Here comes Creepy Dave. Hey, everybody. Everybody call me <laughs> Creepy Dave. Hey, crows. Okay, it's too much crows. Wait, who's that? All right. Okay. Here comes a Creepy Dave. <laughs> That's what people call me. <laughs> How you doing? Okay, you walk away. <laughs> Uh-oh. Creepy Dave made a pee-pee. <laughs> He's everywhere. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> creepy Dave. So in the 1990s, some divers were diving, as they do, off the coast of Japan. And they came across something that looked like this. Granted, there's a lot of weird sh** down there, but this was a mystery. So the science hippies decided to check it out. One thing they found was that if you were near one of these underwater goatsies, you would often find one of these little fuckers lurking about. You know what that is? That's a tiny pufferfish, Torquid Jenner albumaculosis. I know what you're thinking, ah, the pufferfish. Sure they're cute, and then they puff up, thinking they're better than the rest of us. They got the teeth like the people do. And some eat clowns, mind you, without proper table manners. Oh, but they don't have hands. I mean, even so, you could make it look more polite. Anyway, but these <laughs> pufferfish are very small, only around 10 centimeters. And it turns out they're the ones creating those two meter circles. And apparently it's some sort of a sex pad. The whole thing kicks off with a male pufferfish choosing where the center will be. Then, in a series of straight lines, it starts excavating. But this isn't your run-of-the-mill excavation. This is excavation by shaking your ass. Takes some doing. In the beginning, it doesn't look like much. But over time, you can start to see the peaks and troughs of the circles emerge. The whole pattern is made by a series of roughly straight line runs. Some go in, some go out. But by watching the pufferfish, science hippies were able to extrapolate some simple rules that they could use to make a simulation. Now, the structure of the whole thing has some interesting properties. The larger valleys on the outside guarantee that no matter which direction the water is flowing, at least half of the channels will point the flow inward. The center, which is a bit sunken, has less water movement. And one of the things that the pufferfish is doing while it excavates is stirring up very fine particles of sand, which then make their way to the center and settle. So the middle of the circle is quite plush, you know, a place you might want to make your babies. The whole process takes like a yeah, week, a and near the end there's some adorable finishing touches. One, the male decorates the outside peaks with little clamshells. We know how he got those. And two, he makes this sort of beautiful wavy maze pattern in the fine center sand. All of this to get the female pufferfish's attention. And when she gets there, you can tell he's excited. Are you seeing this? I made the whole thing. I mean, really just using my head. If it goes well, she drops some eggs and he fertilizes them. And look at this. While that's happening, he bites her cheek. <laughs> this is romantic. But then she f***s off and leaves him to look after the eggs. And the fancy circle thing sort of deteriorates. There's no upkeep. Until he's in a sort of run-down bachelor pad with a whole bunch of larvae. It actually does look kind of happy. <laughs> I did it. In the category of a most unfortunate... I mean, for them, that's the goal, right? <laughs> Phone, you'll have to keep your eyes out for it. So there's a number of caterpillars that react to sound. The caterpillar of the monarch, for example, gets all metal. Bang your head, bang your head. The caterpillar of the horned spanworm moth gets straight up freaky, has these inflatable tentacles on its back. And then you have Cape Lappet caterpillars, which look a bit more like a Muppet having an erection. It's thought that this is a defense against parasitoid wasps. But it does also draw some attention, doesn't it? <laughs> However, did you know that caterpillars can also make noise as a defense? No, this is not the unfortunate microphone. Some caterpillars rub their mouth parts together to make clicking or chirping noises. Others, like Amorpha juglandus, make sound by forcing air through pores on their back segments. <laughs> Sounds like a polite way of saying fart. <laughs> Excuse me, I just forced some air out of a pore on my back segment. Oh, and it's not that <laughs> microphone either. Apparently the squeaking works and scares the shit out of this bird. The caterpillar of Nicerix magna makes noise by forcing air through its mouth parts. Also freaks out a bit, as would you if somebody came at you with a pair of forceps the size of your hips. It's not that <laughs> like either. Svecadina abati also vocalizes, and if you slow it down you can witness a fundamental law of nature. Everything sounds like a fart if you slow it down enough. The caterpillar of <laughs> Amphium floridensis also makes sounds by pushing air through its mouth. Kind of terrifying, but when you put it all together, it sounds like it's spitting beats. <laughs> Literally. And no, that's not the microphone either. This is the <laughs> microphone. 
To prove that the caterpillar was making sounds out of its mouth, they went ahead and mic'd up the rest of the animal. So there was a microphone whose only job was to prove that sound didn't come out of the caterpillar's anus. <laughs> you know, imagine getting that job assignment. And then you gotta deal with all the sh from your parents. I told you to go into a decent profession like rock and roll or hip hop. But no, you wanted to be a science microphone. <laughs> look at you now. A perfectly good microphone put to waste, not measuring sound from a teenage butterfly's anus. At least you could have gotten the one that forces air out the pore on its back segment. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, these be too hilarious. Oh, there's more at the end. Okay. What we got? Forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, and forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. I forget what this bird is called, but this bird that that move, is, what, what it's doing is actually part of, a, it's like it's practicing a mating ritual. I remember, like, get what animal program I was watching way back. But when a female approaches them, they'll, he's practicing the dance, so literally do that dance, and the entire dance he keeps her from seeing his head, which drives her curiosity. If it all works out, they go off and mate. Interesting. Pretty cool, right? I teach myself, you know. Like this move, it's hard. You gotta practice, like a lot of practice. You have to stretch. <laughs> ah! But he thinks that's exactly what he's doing. He's practicing. It feels good. Ah! Getting ready for mating season. Ah! Oh, that's nice. Whoa. <laughs> Who's that? That's annoying. Why don't you come down here, bird? Uh, maybe talk or punch to the face? Or maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe it's taller than me. Like maybe up here, or, and then, yeah. Forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool being me. <laughs> Love it. Oh, man. <clears throat> well, there you go. Another True Facts Animal Awards show. Strangest things that they, topics they be picking. But always a good time. All right, y'all. Y'all know what to do. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this one. Let me know if you'd like to see me react to next. Hit that like button before you go. Share this video with everyone you know. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right? So, till next time, take care of yourselves. And I'm out of here.